In video one of this series, I took you through the initial steps to set up a secure virtual server on DigitalOcean. In this video, I'll guide you through the process of setting up Nginx, PHP, and MariaDB, which will form the foundations of a working web server. To get started, you're gonna to need to open up a new SSH connection to your server. If you don't have one already, you can see mine up on the screen here. And let's begin by installing Nginx. Now, although the official Ubuntu package repository includes Nginx packages, they're often outdated. So instead, I'm going to use the package repository maintained by Andre Suri. That's gonna include the latest Nginx staple packages. Let's go ahead and add the repository. We'll type sudo add apt repository, then space PPA Andre, and then we'll do slash Nginx dash Y. Now, if that is too long for you, of course, I recommend just jumping right over to the spinupwp written version of this guide. You'd be able to copy both commands we're about to use right here, just clicking that copy button and then paste it right in. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and return. It's gonna ask for my password because this is a pseudo level command. Go ahead and type that in. All right, the repository has been added. Let's go ahead and run the update. We'll do sudo apt update. All right, the update is complete, but there are a few items that can be upgraded. So let's go ahead and update those. We'll go ahead and type sudo apt dist dash upgrade and then slash y. Go ahead and hit return. All right, my upgrade is complete. I'm gonna go ahead and install Nginx. We'll type sudo apt install Nginx dash y and hit return. All right, the install is complete. Now I can confirm that everything worked correctly by typing Nginx dash V. There we go, we can see it's installed and it's currently running version 1.18.0. All right, now that we got Nginx successfully installed, it's time to start the configuration process. Now out of the box, Nginx is pretty well optimized. However, there are a few basic adjustments that we do need to make. Before opening up the configuration file, we're gonna need two pieces of information about our server, the CPU core count and the open file limit. Now, there there are a couple commands we can run here to get the info that we need. To find out the number of CPU cores your server has available, type in grep space process, then space slash proc slash CPU info. Then we'll do the straight line up and down space WC, then space minus L and go ahead and hit return. You can see that the number one comes up because I've got a single processor installed. All right, now the next command we're gonna type is to figure out the server's open file limit. This is a lot easier to type. We'll type U limit dash N. Mine is 1024. Now we're gonna wanna take note of both the number of CPU cores as well as the open file limit as we're gonna need this information in just a minute. All right, let's go ahead and open up the Nginx configuration file. To do so, we're gonna type sudo space nano slash etc slash Nginx slash Nginx dot c-o-n-f for configuration. We'll go ahead and hit return. All right, right out of the gate, I'm gonna tell you that in this video, we are not gonna get into absolutely everything in the configuration file. Instead, we're gonna focus on what you need to change. By the way, if you don't want to mess around with the configuration file at all, you can always visit the last part of this series to download the Nginx configuration kit right away. Back over to the nano editor. The first thing we're gonna do is set the user to the username that is currently logged in. So for me, I'm gonna go ahead and replace right here where it says www-data, and I'm gonna enter in my username, which is Dave. This will make managing file permissions much easier in the future, but it's only acceptable security-wise when running a single user access server. The next item down is the worker underscore processes. Now this is a directive that shows how many workers are allowed to spawn per server. The general rule of thumb here is to set this to the amount of CPU cores your server has available. In my case, this is one. The events block has two directives. The first is the worker connections. This should be set to your server's open file limit. If you remember, mine was 1024. This setting tells Nginx how many simultaneous connections can be opened by each worker underscore process. So for example, if you have two CPU scores and your open file limit is 1024, your server can handle 2048 connections per second. However, the number of connections doesn't directly equate to the number of users that can be handled by the server, as the majority of web browsers are gonna open at least two connections per request. The multi-accept directive here should be uncommented, so go ahead and remove that 
pound symbol. We do want to leave it set to on, which informs each worker to process and accept all new connections at a time, as opposed to accepting one new connection at a time. Moving down the file, we'll see the HTT block next. The first directive we need to change here is the keep alive timeout, which by default is set to 65. Keep alive timeout determines how many seconds a connection to the client must be kept open before it's closed by Nginx. This directive should be lowered as you don't want idle connections sitting there for up to 65 seconds if they could be utilized by new clients. I'm going to go ahead and set mine to 15. For security reasons, we're going to go ahead and uncomment the server tokens directive here and make sure that it is set to off. This is going to disable Nginx from showing the version number in error messages and response headers. Now right underneath server tokens, I'm going to go ahead and add another directive. This is going to be client underscore max underscore body underscore size. This directive will allow us to set the maximum size allowed by the WordPress media library for uploads. I'm going to go ahead and set mine to 64 megabytes. A little further down the HTT block, we're going to find a section dedicated to gzip compression. By default, gzip is set to on, but we want to tweak some values a little here for better handling of static files. The first thing we want to do is uncomment the gzip underscore proxy directive and make sure it's set to any. This is going to ensure that all proxied request responses are gzipped. Second, we want to uncomment the gzip underscore comp underscore level and we're going to set the value here to 5. This controls the compression level of a response and can have a value anywhere from 1 to 9, but be careful not to set this value too high as it can negatively impact CPU usage. And finally, let's uncomment the gzip zip underscore types directive and leave these default values in place. This is going to ensure that JavaScript, CSS, and other file types get gzipped in addition to HTML. All right, let's go ahead and save our configuration here and exit. I'll press control X and when asked if I'd like to save, I'll press Y and then hit return. Next up, we have some configuration to do to make sure that Nginx correctly serves PHP and we don't get any blank white screens when trying to access PHP scripts. That would be bad when running WordPress. So let's go ahead and open up the fast underscore params file. To do this, we'll type sudo nano slash etc slash Nginx slash fast CGI underscore params. Now, once again, you can always just head over to the written version of this guide and just copy and paste it in. I almost never actually type anything directly into the terminal. It's always better to copy and paste. So just because you're seeing me do this, you should probably not follow my lead. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. All we're looking for in this file is to make sure that this directive exists. If it's not in yours, go ahead and add it. All right, so we're done here. I'll hit Control X to exit. I didn't have any changes, so I don't need to save anything. Now, in order for our changes, we made to the Nginx configuration file to take effect, we're going to need to restart Nginx. But before we do that, we want to make sure we didn't make any mistakes in the configuration file. And luckily enough, there is a command for that, sudo nginx-t. All right, assuming you get the OK message like I did, go ahead and restart Nginx. To do so, just type sudo service nginx restart. Next, we're going to talk about something called the catch all server block. Now, what this means is when we go to the server's domain name, we get a Nginx welcome page. It looks something like this. However, this isn't actually a desired behavior. It would be better if the server returned an empty response for an unknown domain name. To do this, we're going to go ahead and just remove two files. Let's head back over to the terminal. I'll type in sudo rm, that is the command to remove files. And let's go ahead and enter this path in here slash etc nginx slash sites dash available slash default. I'll hit return. And there's one more file to get rid of. I'm going to type sudo rm slash etc nginx slash sites dash enabled slash default. Next, we need to add a catch-all block to the Nginx configuration file. That's the file we've been working with throughout most of this video. So I'm just going to cycle through my recent commands here. There it is. I'll go ahead and hit return. To do that, I just press the up key and it'll go through all of the most recent commands. All right, here is our configuration file. Now towards the bottom of the file, we're going to find a line that includes the words site-enabled. So I'm going to go ahead and find that by pressing control W that brings up the search function. And then I'll type sites-enabled and go ahead and search for it. 
Here we go. This is the directive that I was looking for. And what I'm going to do is just go back over to the written guide and I'm going to copy in a little bit of code over here and just paste it in right underneath that directive. Now I can press control X to exit. I'm going to go ahead and save hit return and I'm brought back out to the prompt. Now, of course, just like before, we're going to need to restart before our configuration changes take effect. But once again, we want to test the configuration to make sure there are no errors. So I'll type in sudo nginx dash T. And once again, I got the OK message. So let's go ahead and restart by doing sudo service nginx restart. Now when I visit my domain name, I should get an error message and sure enough, I do. All right, next up, we're going to be installing PHP version 7.4. Now, just like Nginx, the official Ubuntu package repository does have PHP packages. However, they're not the most up to date. So once again, we're going to rely on those maintained by Andre Suri. To add the repository, go ahead and type in sudo add apt repository space PPA colon Andre slash PHP space dash Y and then go ahead and hit return. It's going to ask for your password. Go ahead and add that. Now, of course, every time you add a new repository, you do want to check for updates. So let's go ahead and type sudo apt update. Next up, we're going to install PHP version 7.4. I am not going to mess around with typing this one. You can see it's a pretty decent command here. Let's go ahead and copy it from the written version of this guide and paste it into the terminal window. And there we go. All right, the installation is complete, but let's go ahead and confirm that PHP has been installed correctly. To do so, I'm going to type PHP dash FPM 7.4 and then dash V. And there we go. We get the confirmation that PHP version 7.4.7 .7 is currently running. Now that PHP is installed, we need to configure the user and group that the service will run under. Now this setup that I'm about to show you does not provide security isolation between sites by configuring PHP pools. So we will run under a single PHP pool under our user account. Now, if you require security isolation between sites, I don't recommend that you use this approach. Instead, you're going to want to sign up first spin up WP to provision your servers for you. Now let's go ahead and move forward by opening up the default pool configuration file, sudo nano slash etc slash php slash 7.4 slash fpm slash pool dot d slash www conf or conf. Now we're just going to change a few lines here. I'm going to scroll down until we get to user and group. And I'm just going to go ahead and replace this with our username. In my case, that is Dave. And I'll do the same thing for group. Let's scroll down a little further until we get to listen.owner. And we're going to change that to our username as well. And same thing for the listen.group. Let's go ahead and exit control X, save and hit return. Next up, we're going to adjust the php.any file to increase the WordPress maximum upload size. Now, you might be thinking that we did that already. I remember you said something about that inside of the Nginx configuration file, but they both must be changed in order for the new maximum upload file to take effect. So let's go ahead and open up the PHP any file. To do that, we'll type sudo nano slash etc slash php slash 7.4 slash fpm slash php dot any. Now, what we're looking for here is a directive called the upload max file size. So I'm going to go ahead and search for that, pressing control W, and then I can type in upload underscore max. That should be enough. I'll go ahead and search. And sure enough, here it is. Right now, it's set to just be two megs. I'll go ahead and change that to what I set in the client max body size directive in the Nginx configuration file, which was 64. You do want to make sure you match those up. There is one more directive we want to change, and that is the post max size. Let's go ahead and search for that. Currently it's set to eight. I want to match this up to what I set in the client max body size directive as well. So I'll change that to 64. Let's go ahead and hit control X, Y to save and return to the command line. Just like Nginx, we need to restart PHP in order for our changes to take effect. And also just like Nginx, we're going to want to make sure that our syntax is correct before we go ahead and boot up anything that's wonky. So let's go ahead and type this command in sudo php-fp. 7.4 dash T. 
the test is successful. So I can go ahead and restart PHP using the command sudo service php 7.4 fpm restart. Now that Nginx and PHP have been installed, we can confirm that they're both running and under the correct user by typing in HTOP. Let's go ahead and do that, press return. Once you see a screen like this, you can press F3 and go ahead and search for PHP FPM. You can see I've got one command here running as the root user. If I press F3 again, I will find an additional one running as my username. We can repeat this process for Nginx. And here's the process running as my username. If I press F3 again, here is the process running as root. The instance running under the root user is the main process that spawns each worker. If you don't see anything, make sure you go back and check your configuration. Make sure that you've restarted both Nginx and PHP. Next up, we're gonna install WPCLI, or WordPress Command Line Interface. If you've never used the WordPress Command Line Interface before, it's a command line tool for managing WordPress installations. It greatly simplifies the process of downloading and installing WordPress and many, many other tasks. Let's navigate to our home directory, cd tilde slash. Next up, we're gonna use curl to download the WPCLI. For this, I'm gonna jump over to the written guide and grab this rather long and complex URL. We'll paste it in here. And the download's complete. We can check to make sure it worked by typing in php wp pcli.far dash dash info. You can see it outputs some information about our current PHP installation as well as a few other details. Now what we want is to be able to just type WP to access the command line tool. In order to do that, we need to move it into our path and ensure that it has execute permissions. So let's go ahead and change the permissions here by typing chmod plus x space wp-cli.phar. Next, we'll go ahead and move this file by using the mv command. So I'll type sudo mv, that's to move a file. Then we'll type wp-cli.phar slash usr slash local slash bin slash wp going to ask for your admin password. All right, that's it. We can now access the WPCLI tool by just typing in WP. More on this to come. The final package to install is MariaDB, which is a drop-in replacement for MySQL. Now we're choosing MariaDB because it offers more features and speed over MySQL. It's also fully open source and has been adopted by a large number of companies. Now again, the Ubuntu package repository does contain MariaDB, but it's not the most recent recent stable release. So we're gonna add a repository and follow it up with an update. But rather than typing it here, I'm just gonna go over to the written version. You can see there are quite a few commands here. I'll go ahead and copy this and paste it right into my terminal window. Now the repository is installed, so let's go ahead and install MariaDB. I'll type sudo apt install mariadb-server-y. All right, now that MariaDB is installed, we need to secure it. Luckily, there's a built-in script which will prompt us to change a few insecure defaults. So let's go ahead and run that script. It is sudo mysql underscore secure underscore installation. Hit return. The first thing it's doing is asking for my current root password, so I'll go ahead and type that in. For switch to Unix socket authentication, I'm gonna choose yes. Next up, it's asking us if we want to change the root password. I'm gonna go ahead and enter yes here. Let's go ahead and add a new password. Again, you can use something like one password to manage this. When it asks you if you want to remove anonymous users, go ahead and say yes. When it asks if you want to disallow root login remotely, go ahead and say yes. And we can reload the privilege tables as well. We'll say yes here. That's all for this video. In the next video, I will guide you through the process of setting up your first WordPress site and how to manage multiple WordPress installs. I'll see you there.